So, and so in that, I want to go ahead at this point, Matthew 6, verse 7. Now, we we're talking about prayer, okay, and talking about maybe getting ready to go speak to somebody who we love and we want them to accept Christ, you know. And when we, it's so funny, Jesus is getting ready to talk to his guys here. This is in red, Matthew 6 and 7. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father. Now this is the part that's interesting. For your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Okay, let's stop right there. So... <clears throat> We're talking about prayer. We're talking about the petitions that we make. We also know that there's other scriptures that tell us we have not because we ask not. But yet it's the craziest thing. Jesus looks at his guys and says, hey, God already knows what you need before you ever ask him. So now I'm going to play a different side of the fence here for just a second. If he already knows, why do I need to pray about it? Now, as we keep that in mind, let's go on a little bit further. After this manner, therefore, now it goes back to the boys, and pray like this. Even though you are, he already knows what you need, when you pray, pray like this. So this is nice to know. So Jesus is helping us to overcome this question that I just asked. It says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, thank you for your word. How many, how many of you in here love the word? Right. Power, there's power in that word. What we see here in this is Jesus gives us a breakdown of, uh, real quick as he's teaching these guys. And he says, there's some things that are being pointed out here pretty quick like, and so I want to really just kind of encapsulate it very quickly. The reason why he wants us to go ahead and pray isn't to be exchanging information about our needs. It's not, we don't have to exchange, we're not exchanging information. What we're doing is we're building a relationship. And it can, this relationship can only be building and growing and healthy if we go at a, it, at this in a certain way, and one of the things that you see when, with what he's talking about, we are confess we're, we're putting ourselves in a place of humility when we already know that he hears, he already knows our every need, or when we humble ourselves to acknowledge him that he is, and he even talks about here, you first recognize our Father which art in heaven. You, we're, we're putting him in a place that he deserves, and he alone only deserves to be. We have set him higher above all things, and we, put, we, we take and remind ourselves, because he doesn't, he's not looking at us to try to figure out if we're humble, meek, or proud. Or, this helps us when we put him in the place that he's, it helps us to recognize the fullness of who he is. And so that humility, when we can put him in the right place, and, and, and then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. So at this point, you know, yeah, we've got concerns, we've got cares that we want to give a petition to the Lord about. But really what the, Jesus told his guys, he said, hey, talk to God about his will. Talk to him about his kingdom, what he wants to represent, what he would like to establish here on earth, in earth, that is already established in heaven, get to know the will of God. See, all of a sudden now we take these cares of the, that we're, these burdens that we're carrying, we get to lay those down. We say, okay, God, you've heard about what I want for years and years and years when I come to pray with you, but this time I want to hear what do you want me to pray? What do you want to come to fruition? What do you want to see established? How do you want your kingdom to be expressed? And at that point, when we're praying, we're saying, Lord, let your kingdom be established. Let your will be revealed. Let it be performed. And in this, what again, we're just at this place where we're now submitting. So not just humbly, we're hum humbly submitting ourselves to his will. And we're doing it through prayer, speaking out loud to our heavenly Father. And it goes on to say, it says, give us our day, our daily bread. Now, we can say that's just food, but let's go a little bit beyond that. Our sustenance comes from Him. 
And when saying, when we're asking for these things, we're also at the same time saying, Lord, I recognize that every good thing that I have that came from you. Again, and that's not because I went out and I did a good job at my, I did, I performed well at my job and I got a raise and I got, you know, I can go out and buy groceries now. No, everything that I have that sustains me has come from you. Again, we're submitting to him. We're, we're humbly positioning ourselves. And the neat thing is, is when we do this, when we will allow ourselves to take this position and we remind ourselves that we need to be in this position, what happens at that point too is we can stop trying to be in control of everything. I'm going to say that again. We can stop trying to be in control of everything. If you want peace in your heart, we can't try to be, we cannot be trying to control things and be walking in peace at the same time. Because listen, most everything is out of our control. Now ourself, I mean, we're talking about loved ones, right, that we're praying for. We cannot control those folks. I've tried. With my kids, I'm like, you rascal. They're young adults now. They're not kids. They're always going to be my kids. But it's like, oh my gosh. I can't control that. And again, humbling ourselves to the place and saying, Lord, I know I can't do anything about that but I still trust you and I still carry that on my heart and I'm going to petition this to you not as a demand not as an order not because you said God but because I just know you're that good and you want this more than I do and so it's the, again it's that position of how we, we approach him and how we, we press in to getting to know him and it goes on even further it says in Lead us, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When we take this position of humility and being submitted to the Lord, I, I really believe this forgiveness is a byproduct. It starts to become easier. I've had I've counseled several people and it's in in it I've heard about every time when it comes to family trauma or drama uh, it's just you it, it, the statement will come out of the person's mouth you just don't understand what they how they hurt me I'm like well you're right I don't but I do understand one thing that the way they hurt Jesus the pain that he took on voluntarily is far more than anything that any of us have ever suffered. Even the most traumatic things that I wouldn't even want to mention in this room. Hard things happen to people. I'm not belittling that. But He took that for us. He carried that for us to the cross. And it empowers us to have grace to be able to forgive. And in that, when we, if we, if we, if we're not careful, we don't allow this humility to be uh, part of our, our, our person as we spiritually communicate with the Lord. Forgiveness won't happen if we're, not, if we're not careful. We have to let that, we have to yield ourselves to that because the Lord wants to set us free. He wants us to be delivered from the burden of the things we've done wrong. And that happens when we allow others to be forgiven for the things that they've wronged us in. It just works together. And so these, there are some spiritual principles here. But uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You know, it's, it's just, it's a reminder saying, yes, yes, Lord, please forgive that person who did me wrong because I know I did you wrong. And I probably will again later someday. So it's, it's just allowing the Lord to let that settle in us and to be part of how we, or, you know, how we feel and how we think. And it says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And amen. And so again, this is where we talked about there we, uh, there's evil in the world. There's, there just is, guys. The cross paid for our sins, the atonement, but it did not dispel the world of evil. Evil still exists. Until he comes back, evil will be part of this culture we live in. 
But I love what the, the word, especially that they're in red letters, that we have a grace that when we ask him, Lord, don't let us be overcome with evil. That's what they're kind of saying. That's what Jesus was saying. Lord, don't let this evil come on us. Don't let us be partakers of this evil. Don't let us become the distributors of this evil. Because now that we have this relationship and have talked with the Lord, we're in His presence and we're trying to get to know Him, there's a grace that meets us that keeps us from being ensnared by the evil wickedness that's in this world. Because if we didn't have, if He didn't give us a grace, that evil, I'm sure, would overtake us. We would be overtaken by it, but we are protected because of His goodness and His sovereignty. He keeps us from the, the evil being flowing not just to us, but through us. We don't want to be contributors to this, some of these wicked causes. And there's a grace that finds us when we pursue Him in this. And, 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 I, and I want to look, when we go to us, uh, Second Cor- uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles. And I'm just going to go ahead and read it real quick. Oh, she's already on it. Cool. Thank you. Bada boom. If my people, okay, now here, here I want to stop right there. If my people, there's, the Lord is looking and he's saying, okay, all of us that know who he is, he's put his spirit in, our, in us, he's entrusted us with the down payment of heaven, his Holy Spirit. He said, if they, that's us, my people. Can I see a show of hands who is part of the my people group? We are him. We are them. If my people, which are called by my name, I want to, I just want to say this. I want everything that I, if I'm looking for peace, I want to be looking for it in Christ, not in anything external. If I'm looking for deliverance and if I'm looking for hope, if I'm looking for, I mean, salvation can only be found in him and all the other attributes of heaven and the goodness of God can only be found in him. So as we're praying, we're not trying to be set free from some uh, circumstance. We're trying to know him. We're trying to understand him and we're trying to relate with him so that he can download how he sees things and not. For, and, and, and which will help us not to be overcome with the things that we're seeing that just maybe aren't that good. He gives us a new perspective, and it's in Him. And so, that, so when it says that are in my name, which are called by my name, that's why I always like to, I hear a lot of people pray, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's the best place to be. When we're in that, we can declare those things. But it, but it goes on, which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We talked about it, that earlier. It's a, hum, it's a positioning of ourselves in, in hum, being humble. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. How many of you in here believe that? Amen. Is that for us today? So us as, you know, we're, we're of the kingdom and we live in a nation. So us that are called by his name, us kingdom folk, we have the ability and the grace to, heal, to, to allow God to hear us and heal our land. We have to have hope for that. Um, many years ago, I kind of was trying to figure out, I was going through a phase and I was just so tired of everything that was going on in around about me, I was about ready to become a separatist. I don't know if you guys, I was ready to just go find a place, get away from it all, lock down, get enough land where nobody's going to come in and bring any of the junk. I was just, is it going to be my family and the Lord? You know, we're just, we're, we're out of this. But that's not what he's called us to do. That was wrong thinking. He's called us to pray for our nation, to seek his face, to listen to what His will is for this nation and then to repeat that and then to be partakers of that and to, to be the example of that here in this nation. And so when we pray for things like lost loved ones, for uh, the, the pregnancy choices, and that is us being doing spiritual warfare against spiritually wicked things. And God has given us the grace to do that. He's put his name on us. His stamp of authority is on us. We have power in the name of Jesus. 
and we get to be partakers of this. And look, it's, it's the nicest thing. The line of communication, the battery will never go dead. You don't even have to charge this line of communic this type of line of communication. It's always, 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 wherever we are. He said, if you'll call out to me, I will. I'll be there and I will hear you. When you, when, so this is the nice thing is, is, is continually open uh, lines of communication with him. And if we can just really take these scriptures to heart tonight, that's my, my, my hope is that we can see a renewed value on what these scriptures are saying and a higher impetus of the power that we hold within us by seeking his face with a, in a humble position, submitted to his will, and by prayers and supplications all the time, God's going to be, and I think that's what Bob, he started out with that, that word of encouragement, and I feel like this is one of the many, but what one of the things that we have to be a people of, and that's a people of prayer. Amen. Let's never grow weary for, in praying for other people. Let's always be ready to respond, but let's never grow weary in praying for people. Amen? I want to just close this up in prayer here. Let's go ahead if we could. Let's stand. You've all been sitting for a good while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, Lord, Lord. Let's pray in the Spirit for a second. Ke tolo bobo sota bahi. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, the greatest name ever. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Father, we, just, we are so thankful that you formed us with purpose. You made us and created us with purpose. And Lord, that we might be instruments to declare your kingdom purposes to, to establish your will here on earth, dear Lord, and, and to see those things manifest that are in your heart, Lord, to be manifest here, Lord. So though your will be done here in earth as it is in heaven, Lord, we just agree with that tonight. And Lord, we perk our ears right now that as when we're praying, we're not just doing all the talking, Lord, but we're, we're oftentimes able to hear and listen. That we would be dialed in, our frequency, our tuner would be dialed into your frequencies. And Lord, that we would be able to catch insights and glimpses, Lord, of, of who you are, dear Lord. More and more and more. This is what we want. We want a better understanding of who you are, Lord. We oftentimes pursue our identity and trying to figure out who we are in you, Lord. And I'm just, I just believe it that as the more we come to know you and the more we seek your face, the more we'll understand our purpose and who we are here with you, Lord. And so thank you for helping us to be diligent in prayer. Thank you for helping us to be able to commit to one another, to love one another in a way, Lord, any time that we're working through something, Lord, that we are called to be uh, the repairs of the breach. We're called to be peacemakers. We are called, Lord, to, to be reconcilers. And so, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the grace and all the mercy and all the gifts and talents and abilities to be able to represent you well, Lord. I just pray a blessing over this group tonight, these people. And, Lord, all of us in here, we, I just pray that there would be a newfound hunger to want to talk with you, to relate with you, to visit with you, to speak, to listen. And so, Lord, thank you as we do. You soften our hearts. You make us think like you think, Lord. And we just love you, love you, love you. And we just pray that you have your way in Jesus' name. And, Lord, that you heal this nation in Jesus' name. The church believe that says. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Let's go be a people of prayer. Amen. Amen.